eight, seven, six, four, three, two, zero, and lift off for the final launch of Endeavour, expanding our knowledge, expanding our lives in space. Endeavour, roll program. Roger, roll, Endeavour. We can't allow people to tell us what we can or can't understand. If we can understand the universe, we can understand just about anything. So it's a tremendously empowering thing to be able to study and understand the universe. I'm Derek Pitts. I'm Chief Astronomer here at the Franklin Institute Science Museum. I'm also the Planetarium Programs Director and Senior Scientist here. I also have the privilege of being a NASA Solar System Ambassador. A Solar System Ambassador is a person who works in the field that creates programming for audiences to help them understand about the kind of astronomical research and actually planetary research that NASA conducts, helping people to understand more about the planets of our solar systems. People often ask me when I discovered my love of astronomy, and it's kind of a hard question for me to answer because in many ways I don't really remember. All I know is that probably by the age of four, I knew I was interested in astronomy and space science. Often we think of astronomy as being um, far too esoteric, not so practical a pursuit. At the same time, astronomy is, is probably one of the oldest sciences, if not the oldest science. People have been studying astronomy ever since the first people to walk the planet uh, sort of looked up and went, ooh, what's that thing up there? Uh, before language was available. So we've always had a cosmic connection to the universe. The first people walking on this planet spent time outside at night and wondered about what was up there. For us to be able to study astronomy is really a way for us to study who we are and where we may have come from and where we may be heading. It's about us as explorers because when we think about trying to understand the universe out there, it's really a lot about trying to understand the universe up here. Our ability to be able to understand the vast universe also tells us a lot, again, about what we're capable of understanding. With this little six pound object up here inside our skulls, we are able to understand not everything, by a long shot, but quite a bit. So that tells us about our capability to understand anything of any sort of complex subject or concept. One of the most exciting objects in astronomy are black holes. A black hole is the result of a very high mass star, say six times the mass of our star, exploding at the end of its life and then collapsing. So what actually is a black hole? What's the structure of a black hole? Well, it's actually comprised of a couple of different components. One component is the singularity itself, and that singularity is the collapsed star maybe about the size of this planet, maybe even slightly smaller than the size of this planet. But imagine packing all of the mass of a star, six times the mass of our star, into something the size of the Earth. What makes it a black hole is the fact that that very small object still has the gravitational pull of that object that is six times the size of our sun. What this does is it makes it impossible for energy to escape from this object. So a black hole is really just a collapsed star. The reason why it can't be seen, the reason why it's black, is because the escape velocity of light from the surface of that object is greater than the speed of light. The escape velocity goes up greater than the speed of light, so we can't see it because light can't escape. Because astronomy is one of the oldest sciences around, this means that people have been studying the night sky for as long as people have been on the planet. Uh, ancient civilizations that we know of well, the Sumerians, the Egyptians, the Dogon, and many, many others all across the globe have always had some sort of mythology about the night sky and at the same time have had some science studying the night sky as well. At the same time, people of ancient civilizations have been able to make observations that have uh, either sort of baffled us in the modern day or observations that we have not been able to make. A very famous example of this are the Dogon people of Africa. The Dogon people of Africa, in their historical records, have said that they have been able to see 
a, what has been for quite a long time, a hidden or an unseen companion of one of the brightest stars in the sky, Sirius. Sirius A is very bright and very easy to see. It's the star that we normally identify as the dog star. But Sirius B, Sirius B is a smaller companion that for all intents and purposes has been invisible to those looking at the night sky, even with telescopes. But the Dogon history says that the Dogons have been able and had been able to identify uh, Sirius B uh, thousands of years ago. There's also been some discussion of the possibility that the Dogons have had this capability, this ability to see this or this knowledge about this, because visitors from other parts of the galaxy have come to impart that knowledge to them. Well, we don't really have very much evidence of that, but we do have the historical records of the Dogon in which they have indicated that they've been able to see this. In fact, they were saying, and their records show, that this star existed before observational records of modern times identified the existence of the star. One of my favorite activities to do these days is something I call guerrilla astronomy. It's just where I take a telescope out into Center City, Philadelphia, plop it down on a street corner where I think there's going to be a lot of traffic in the evening, and set it up so people can look through it, and then give people a chance to see an astronomical object through a good telescope right in a Center City environment. I'm particularly disturbed about this concept that nothing can be seen in an urban area because it teaches kids in an urban environment that there's no reason for them to look up into the night sky because they can't see anything. To me what that does is it damps down their experience and in turn it can also damp down their sort of imagination about what's possible to do. I think that astronomy is a, is a great avenue for kids to develop an interest in science. I love to teach kids in urban environments that there's plenty for them to see. I love to teach them how to see a particular kind of planet or look at a particular aspect of the moon and then encourage them to pass that information on to others in their neighborhood. But if I can teach a child how to do that, that empowers the child with knowledge and it gives them a confidence in their ability to connect to something that's so far away, considered so remote, considered so esoteric. We are all part of the universe. The universe is all part of us. And every child, no matter where they are, deserves to understand that they are part. And one of the quickest ways to make that happen is to teach them how to observe and identify these things. Eat, breathe, do science, sleep later. This is Derek Pitts for Mondo Black. Excellent. Alright, this is a neat way to travel. Isn't it great?